Well, Phil's been our most consistent leader in general, regardless of position uh, last year and this year. He's our most consistent um, practice player. Um, he always has energy. He's all about the team. He's our most consistent competitor. And so, he, he, I even said it last year, it, he would be the one guy who kind of holds that standard almost every day. Now, Tinsley and Keyshawn and Malik, I mean, those guys are getting better and doing it um, better than they were last year also. But Phil is our, our kind of heart of our team. Yeah, and we didn't have much depth last year. Uh, we had a lot of injuries. We had one guy play every game. That's it. Everybody else missed a game due to injury. Um, well, and so it hurt us at times. But our guys fought through. And I thought we grew a lot last year because of that. We had to face a lot of adversity. And guys understand, you just keep playing. Figure out a way to win. But this year, we do have more depth. Um, it'll be more pressure on competition for minutes. And so sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. So how do our, our guys respond to that? Obviously, if there's an injury, I think we can sustain it better. Hopefully, we don't have any foul trouble. But we have major competition for minutes. Um, and it'll be interesting with some of the guys who wins that spot, who wins those minutes, because some of the guys are a little different, and it could determine how we play a little bit. So, But I, I love our depth this year, um, and I love our consistency of effort throughout the summer. Yeah, so our non-conference is, I think, really set up well because it's extremely challenging. But because we were able to get so many quality home games, you know, obviously you have a better chance to win at home. And when you have Ole Miss, San Diego State, BYU, Florida Gulf Coast, Cleveland State, who played in their championship game last year, when you have those teams coming in at home, and then you work in your, you know, we played Georgia in the Caymans. Obviously, whether you win or lose determines who you play after that. We go to Central Florida, who will probably be picked to win the American Conference. We go to Belmont, who wins their league every year. And really challenging. But I think this team needs that. I think they're ready for it. But when you have a schedule like we do, the, one of the things it does is you, can't, you don't have room for a night off. You, you just don't, because we're going to get beat if we, if we take a night off. You never want your team to take a night off ever. but. If your schedule is a little easier and you take a night off a little bit mentally, you can still win those games. We don't have that luxury. I think that's how it's going to be in the Valley, too. And so hopefully it prepares us. Well, it's huge. I mean, Loyola's run last year, number one, I'm, myself, and I'm guessing every coach was rooting for them the entire way, obviously because how much we like Porter, how they play the game, but also because the what it does for our league. Um, you got to follow it up with something. You just have to, as a league. Obviously, Loyola probably feels that way as a program. But as a league, we've got to take the attention we got, hopefully the respect we got, and follow it up with success in the non-conference. Um, if we don't do that, quite frankly, the value minimizes dramatically. But we've had two teams in the Final Four in the last five years. The Missouri Valley has. Not many leagues have done that. Um, We've had a lot of success. We've had teams have success in postseason play. Um, but we've got to follow it up with non-conference success. And then hopefully when it comes to that old selection Sunday, they, uh, they call multiple. And I'm just, I didn't say two, uh, two, three, four, whatever it is, multiple teams to get a chance in the dance.